Welcome to the Dynamo Show. I am James Earth, the Chief Architect of WOW for a brand called Dynamo Entrepreneur. We support experts in living well and doing good, predominantly speakers, authors, internet marketers, coaches, bloggers, people that are really taking that oxygen mask and not only putting it on themselves, but also putting it on the world. This is episode 33 and we have three really great guests. Let's start things off with Mr. Andrew Perry. Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, excited yeah. to be here. <laughs> I'm excited to have you. You know, since I met you at the Haste and Hustle event, you know, from wow. our dear friend Shauna, you know, fantastic yes. event. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm just amazed that, you know, you, you really uh, caught my attention there. Thank you. You know, with some of the <laughs> things you told me and just the way you were buzzing about, you obviously have the charisma and the looks and the style and I'm, and I'm intrigued. So I want to learn more. But before we get into okay. business, Let's talk about the past. Let's talk maybe the youth, you know, as you went through the teens, okay. you know, the 20s. Were there any challenges? Uh, well, I would like to say that I was the typical teenager, but I like to think that I was probably a little bit above average when it came to the extracurricular activities, if that's what you want to call it. Um, I spent a lot of my Friday, Saturday, Sundays uh, with most of my friends uh, you know, pretty excessive partying, you know, well, uh, I don't know uh, anything about that. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, and it, it was, it was something that I kind of, uh, dealt with in my own way. Okay. And it's something that kind of went on for a long time and into my mid twenties that oh, wow. kind of hindered my own personal thoughts of would I ever become that successful person that I wanted to be and envisioned as a younger kid. Yeah, yeah. Were yeah. there any like big breakthroughs? Was there like an aha moment that many of us have? Um, yeah. Well, there's um, a couple instances where um, you know, to to get. I didn't know we were gonna get this personal, but we are. You know, we're getting this, personal this right good. here, right now. There's a couple, you know, instances where you would wake up in a random house on a uh, random couch, yes. and you would just kind of look yourself in the mirror. Uh, and you'd be like, how the hell did I get here? If yeah, I'm not to say it. that on top. <laughs> how did I get here? Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. You know, and it was one specific morning I remember where I said to myself, I can't live my life like this anymore. Yeah. I can't continue throwing precious time away on being hungover, spending mm -hmm. money on partying. Mm -hmm. And I think it was just that one specific time I woke up and I remember it was downtown Barrie, Ontario. Okay. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was kind of then and there that I got into a sales position that okay. led me down the road to where I am now. Now, like when we define success now, you know, where we are right here, right now, um, as a successful person on the Dynamo Show, let's talk about what defined success for you back then. Was it different then than yeah, it is now? Yeah, exactly. That was a great question. And so back then, I thought, I knew that I wanted the freedom of time. Yeah. And time was valuable to me. Yeah. But so was making a lot of money. And I couldn't really distinguish um, between the two, and I wasn't sure of how to uh, uh, kind of break the mindset of the nine to five to get to that money. Yeah. So 
now it's I, I went to a sales job where I was working about 80 hours a week and oh, I was wow. making six figures but if you really break down hourly how much you were making it's True. like less than $20 yeah. an hour the zombie position <laughs> yeah so exactly and then so now what success means to me is I, I, Gary Vaynerchuk says hustle Grant Cardone says Love hustle and I get it I, I get it but I think they there's different avenues as opposed as opposed to working 80 hours a week True. hustling can mean finding the right people that can help open the doors for you so you don't have to work 80 hours a week so I think what success means for me is the freedom of time and being in control of your own schedule while still making the money that you want to make I love it I love it it's interesting like the word the word hustle is so popular now you know yeah. it's on t-shirts it's, it's on posters you know a lot of these <laughs> yeah. big guru types you know the the influencers are using the word hustle I actually like the word flow you know you got the hustle and the flow yeah so the hustle is the grind hard 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 work hard right you know the 80 hours right so I, I figured out flow and when I really started to understand universal flow coming through us and getting out of my own way and really using the leverage and working smart versus hard mm -hmm. then you can really experience some big success. I don't know if you got into the flow stage yet. Yeah, so I mean, when I started that sales position, position that I was doing the 80s hours a week, I met with uh, a, a great guy who's my VP at the time who became my mentor. And he taught me how to create and apply systems that I used as a success formula. Mm -hmm. So I implement, mm -hmm. that sales job was not horrible. It taught me a lot. But I use those systems now that create momentum for me and create a flow that yep. allows me to have this freedom of time. And you know, it's it's very easy to do. I don't need to get into the logistics of it. But you know, the internet is full of opportunities for you totally. to use to you know, as virtual assistants, anything yep. uh, like that. You can get projects done. You know, within 24 hours, and you don't even have to physically invest your time into it. That's right. I think Tony Robbins said it best. It was systems win, people fail. Yes. Systems win, people fail. Exactly. Right? So, obviously, you're a busy guy. Um, what do you do to have fun? You know, what, what, what is uh, Andrew so, doing on, on the weekend? So, I, I think I, I like to say that I hit the, um, the lifetime jackpot. My nice. wife is absolutely like gorgeous. Nice. She's so supportive. She gave me the wonderful gift of my handsome son. Very but um, her, her family has a winery in Niagara on the Lake. So we, uh, an Italian family, we spend you know every Sunday drinking coffee at uh, at the local cafe, and then we move to the winery at night, and, and we have a Sunday tradition uh, of of just a, a smorgasbord of food after food after food and that's right. how we spend our time it's all family it's at the winery we hike we take we take drives through the wine route and uh i think family other than hockey takes up most of my free time now are you a wine connoisseur uh, I, I, let's just put it this way i know what i like yes and i know what i don't gotcha so that's about as wine connoisseur as I get, I think. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Very good. When did you understand that like the nine to five wasn't for you? Was it back when you were making that shift out of the 80 or was it a little bit after that? You know. So it was actually before. Because okay. like I said, I mean, I always knew that I wanted to have the freedom of time. But I wanted to make money. Yeah. And so I, I, I went into like a, a general labor role for yeah. about a, maybe a year or two. And I knew that I absolutely hated that aspect of of job choice. The job, so, just over broke. So, but then my my views got obscured because I did the 80 hours a week and, and I, you're taught to be like, oh, that's not nine to five, you know, you're, yeah. you're investing your time to make money. And then that changed again when I realized that I didn't want to invest all that time. Mm -hmm. So the regular nine to five or the eight to eight, that meant nothing to me anymore. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I wanted to do it myself so that I could free up my own schedule. So let's talk about your new venture. No, when did you decide to go out on your own and what are you doing now? Okay, so uh, about a year ago um, is when I just kind of decided to quit my six-figure job, move home. Mm -hmm. And so now what I'm doing is I started, a, it's called Create Your Own Success, the SIOS company. Like so it. basically we, we, we help small businesses, entrepreneurs, create their own success on social media. So we do website design logos, but what we really focus on is how to teach them how to run their own social media campaigns and branding so because important. there's so many businesses out there that charge an arm and a leg and in, in in charge you monthly for that. Mm -hmm. But if I can teach you how to run it yourself, yep. you don't need to pay me all that money. I mean, half my freaking clients we do uh, pro bono anyways. It's If it's something easy and I can teach them, that's what I want to do. I want to help them and push them in the right direction. 
Isn't social media powerful these days? It's you know? very powerful, yeah, very yeah, powerful. Yeah. It's it's how we become so connected. And, and like, you know, I knew, no, we met through Hasten Hustle, but I knew yeah. about you before from social media. Was it my haircut? Hey, that's the first thing that pinned me <laughs> off uh, as soon as I seen you. <laughs> so maybe let's share with some of the younger. We got a lot of younger wannapreneurs and entrepreneurs yeah. that yeah. are watching this show, watching you right now. If you were to give them some advice on the social media world, how to get into it, what would that be? Uh, well, there's no right answer. So the way to do it is just get in there, start documenting. I know um, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, Jane, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk says, "Document, don't create." But when you're documenting your life, you are creating, and that's the thing that you got to know. Um, your business page is your professional page when you're going to work for yourself. So just, just. Do it. Get out there. Just start documenting every single day what you're doing, and and you know that's marketing the, these days, and that's how the business comes to you. So how do they get a hold of you? Uh, you can go to uh, Sios Create Your Own Success on Facebook or thesiosscompany.com, or just reach out to me on Facebook, uh, Andrew Perry. I love it. I love it. Andrew, right. thank you so much for thank coming you very on much. the I show. Appreciate it. I know we're going to cross paths again. Oh, we will. You know, we'll definitely have to have a coffee and brainstorm a little bit about some of the yeah. social media things we can do Let's together. Let's do it. I'm open. I am James Ert. This is The Dynamo Show. This is episode 33, and we will be back right after this short commercial break. Welcome back to The Dynamo Show. I am James Erd and this is episode 33. We are continuing with a really wonderful guest. I just met her recently, but I'm so intrigued, not only with her story, but what she's doing now, and she's here to wow you. Her name is Amy Thompson. Hi. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you for having me, James. I'm You're really happy to welcome. be here. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. I am so enthralled with you, your energy, just like how, how, how amazing you are with what you've been doing lately. Uh, I saw you at Haste and Hustle, you know, you really had a great conversation with Gary the other day and I was just like, this is great, and, you know, she just gets up there and she goes for it and she does it and she's really moving and shaking and doing. But before we get into that and talk a little bit about business and what you're doing now, let's take it back to your past a little bit. Care okay. to share about the hero's journey a little? The hero's journey. Yeah. Definitely. What, what would you like to know most? Your past, what's My going past. on? Okay. Yeah, how'd you get so, here? So, I got here, um, I grew up in a seemingly usual, normal household. I went to school all the time. I suffered from a few illnesses when I was little. Yep. And uh, over time, I ended up getting into depression and anxiety and addiction issues, um, tried to take my own life. There were a bunch of different things that played into it. But essentially, I ended up always knowing I was a fighter yes. and I'll, not even the fighter part as much as I know I'm here for a purpose and I knew that at this big okay right okay. you know that there's yeah. something more the calling yeah and the yeah. biggest thing for me was that I felt so small mm. I felt like everything in the world was too big for me and I couldn't do anything about it mm. I used overwhelmed. to overwhelmed exactly and when I was a child I used to think about wars and I used to think about events and everything that I could not deal with mm. and I didn't know what to do. So I took all of that in. I ended up, um, I'm a very empathetic person. Okay. So I would pick up energies from I people. Sense that. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. Right? So I would walk somewhere and I would just have everybody's stuff yeah. piled on me. Like even now, I can walk into a bathroom somewhere and somebody will tell me about their boyfriend beating them oh boy. or stuff about their bank accounts and everything. Yeah. And it's like, it is feel comfortable sharing. people will just come to me and share anything. But when I was younger, I didn't know how to deal with that and took it on myself. Mm. And uh, so I'm really happy to have discovered like my personal growth and then also discovered that all of these things that I've gone through have become part of my gift to give to the world. Life is for us, not to us. And I am not too small. I am doing things greater than I've ever imagined. And you I know are. that I'm only like in the 1% or even less than what I could potentially do. Yes. Yeah, I'm just beginning. And Where was the exciting. big shift for you? What age? Uh, there have been many shifts. Um, the first one was when my brother had showed up out of nowhere and 
I was just about to jump off of a bridge, you know, who does that? But really, I was about to jump off of a bridge and my brother shows up. He never came out with us. He never did anything with us. He was an introvert homebody oh, sitting at the computer all the time. Mm. And he just randomly showed up. Mm -hmm. And I didn't jump, I went home with him. And that was great. And then the, another time was um, I had a disabled child. Mm -hmm. This was this was exciting. Sorry, this was exciting for me because it was Christmas Day. I was only six months pregnant. I wasn't supposed to have a baby until um, St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. And everybody, there were complications, and it was looking like I may die and my baby might die. And oh I had more faith than I've ever had in mm -hmm. my life. Like, I didn't believe she was sick. I didn't believe there was anything wrong. Mm -hmm. I didn't believe that there was anything wrong with me. Mm -hmm. I even told the Ronald McDonald host that I didn't need the bed because oh, wow. yeah. we are fine, like okay. totally fine. Yeah. And everyone said, you're in denial. Yes. But there is a big difference between denial and faith. Mm -hmm. Big difference. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been in denial about many things in my life. Mm -hmm. But this was faith. This is so different. And I loved my baby more than anything, and she ended up um, being in the top 1% after a while. She was born with a lot of, lot of disabilities. Complications. And then, and then ended up being pretty good. Like, and I think that was my love and my faith. Of course. Yeah, of course. I, I know it. So you made it through that one. Yes. Very good, so, very um, good. So there have been many, and uh, oh my gosh, another one was when I realized that I used to have long hair yeah. to hide my face. Okay. Like I have long hair again now, but that's just because I like it. Yeah, yeah. But I had long hair and I hid my face and it was because I was afraid of facing the world. And one day I, I realized that I used to think I was so hideous that I, like I had, I obviously had mental and, and physical health issues, but I was afraid to face the world mm -hmm. and I hid behind it. And one day I was like, that's it. I'm, I just cut it all off and I bleached it blonde. Like, and then mm -hmm. I went blue. You know, you can't, Isn't that you can't crazy? hide anymore. You can't you're hide like, anymore. Guess what? You're on television with five million people. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's talk to them, okay? okay? Let's maybe share some girls that are going through some of this stuff. We have a lot of young entrepreneurs, a lot of people mm -hmm. that want to really elevate their game. If you were to share maybe two or three nuggets with our audience, you know, as to how they can level up their game. Maybe some young girls that are going through challenges similar to yours. Okay, what I would share is that every single one of us has gifts within us. Gifts that we know are there and sometimes we ignore or sometimes people tell us that it's not, it's not worthwhile doing, not worth pursuing, or they push us in other directions. We are often so overloaded with stimulus from everything else that we're not connected with who we are. And the path to freedom is connecting with who we really are. Like letting go of all the other stuff and remembering we are unique and special and everything that is the biggest challenge for you in your life is going to become your greatest gift so stop focusing on it don't live in the past just be who you feel best being like whatever makes you happiest just do oh, that well said. do that well said. be whoever you feel best being exactly. i love it i love it now thank you for that that those are great nuggets of wisdom and and i've noticed something Wonderful, because you being the giver that you are, you're about to be you and give. Yes, and I have to thank my <laughs> sister because my sister is talking about special and unique gifts. My sister is the best rapper ever, not like... I'm the worst. Okay, but I mean gift rapper, she's mm. great. And she wrapped this so that I could present it to you. Well, that thank you. you. Thank you for having me on the show. You're very welcome. You want me to open it? I would love you to open okay, it. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's pop her open. I'll go like this. Oh, look at that, I got sparkles all over me now. Woo! It goes with your pink shirt. That's and it, that's it. it. There we go. Oh boy! Look at that. It's another bald dude. So that is a hand-drawn picture of James Erd. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. In words. In I know words. you guys may not be able to see it, but, but the words, you know, they... Oh, handsome, cute, hot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll read them later. Okay. Thank you but so much. You're that welcome. is absolutely awesome. Let's go like this. Maybe it'll stand up. I hope it stands up. Woo! So this was interesting because very cool. I'm I'm very grateful. Thank you. You're welcome. I am gifts. very grateful you're having me on your show. It'll go up right in my office. That's awesome. For the world to see. I want to say something else to the people. Is the power of our thoughts are so strong, 
And the only way to change them is ourselves. Like, we have to do the work. We can't rely on anybody else. So I use affirmations mm. to, um, to change thoughts. Can you share an affirmation? Well, one of them, and this is specifically for you, this was drawn for James. So it's, I took some of his goals in mind and I put what he would like inside the picture. I'm, I'm going to let you read them later. I'm not going to share them. I but love it. I love it. Anything about my Lamborghini in there? Or? I didn't. But Anything lots, about serving like millions and millions of children on the planet? It is in there. Yes. Yeah. Yes, actually it is. Ooh. And, um, being of it. service. I love sharing my gifts with the world. I have yes. great friends. Yes. I am someone people admire. I am divinely guided and loved. I have limitless potential. And I forgive myself and other easily. Sorry, I forgive myself and others easily. And I'm working towards all of my goals, including the Nobel Peace Prize. Oh, you've heard that one online somewhere. I love it. You Hear told that. me. Reverse engineering from the Nobel Prize, you know, like, like if, if you're out there and you can imagine the greatest thing that you can accomplish on this planet, reverse engineer from that. Irrelevant of how long it takes, you know, it's a really great way to set massive goals and, you know, if you even get close to that, it's like, what's that saying? You know, you shoot for the, the moon and you, and you might hit the stars. You might hit the stars. But you know what? If you're setting an affirmation and it doesn't feel right to you, mm -hmm then you could be doing some damage. So you want to make sure True. that the affirmation feels good to you. You at least 80% believe it. I love yeah. it, I love it. So if somebody actually wants to get a hold of you, how do they do it? Do you have a website? Well, we do. Uh, right now we're about to do a World Empowerment Now project, actually. It's, it's going out and we are aiming to teach empowerment in every country in the world, Woo! in every possible language. It's a small project. It's not a small project. We're going to be going after a Guinness Book of World Records for the largest it. coloring and art contest in the world because I'm going to be teaching people to empower themselves creatively. And it. I'll be teaching people this process as well. Very good. So it's worldempowermentnow.com. Worldempowermentnow.com. Thank you so, so much for coming Thank on you. the show. That was Amy Thompson. I am James Ert. This is The Dynamo Show, and we will see you after this short commercial break. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. This is episode 33. I am James Earth, the Chief Architect of WOW for Dynamo Entrepreneur. Wow, we've had an amazing show already with two really great entrepreneurs. We're going to continue things with this expert rocking it, <laughs> Mr. Armin Shafi. How are you? I'm incredible. You are. You are incredible. Now, <laughs> I, I'm amazed, okay? Are you comfortable with me sharing your age? Yeah, no. Because it, it's empowering, I'm okay? Cool with that. 21. 21. Yeah. Okay, this, this young man is 21 and, and he's rolling like he's 41 and accomplished <laughs> all this stuff already. So I'm blown away. But before we get into business, let's take it back a notch. Let's talk about some of the personal things you've gone through to kind of get to where you are right now because there's a lot of young people that watch this show, you know, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs that are right. just kind of getting started yeah. that you're going to empower today. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I mean, growing up, I. I I was insecure like every other person, every mm -hmm. other human on earth. And, and I learned my strengths out of that. I think everything to some extent is useful, right? Behaviors, emotions, anything, fears are useful to some extent. Um, I grew up uh, quite spoiled as a kid uh, growing up. So my mindset was I can get anything I want. Yeah. Uh, so I thank my mother for that. Yeah. Uh, because growing up in the adult world, if you don't have that mindset, you really don't really strive for anything. You, you have to believe that you can get anything you want. Mm -hmm. But you grow up and you realize you get it differently. Yeah. You actually have to hustle. Yeah. So, so that's work what I, involved? Fine. No, absolutely. That, that's what I learned. At the age of 18, I went through a near-death experience, oh and I came out a completely different person. So, you care to share? Yeah, no. I was. Um, it was actually one of the best days of my life. I was promoted as a team leader in the, in the company I was in. I made the most money I've ever made in two weeks. Oh, it was one of, like, one of my best days. That's how the day was. I was striving for two weeks and I hit my goal. Okay. I felt like king of the world. I bet. And um, the same day I went out, celebrated, did a bunch of you know, great yeah, stuff yeah, as this yeah, new yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. And you know, life comes in <laughs> party, and just slaps you across the yeah. face uh, to put you back on track. At three in the morning, I'm driving home mm. and I'm falling asleep behind the wheel. Mm. Uh, two stoplights away. 
and I drove right into a utility pole, car completely twisted, hit a fire hydrant, landed on the side of a hill into a parking lot. I'm lucky, it was so early in the morning, no one, no one was around. I should have died, man. I should have died. Wow. If there was a passenger seat, they would not be here right now. And wow. the process I went through, through that experience, it jolted me because you really don't think, like I'm not thinking about what that person said to me last week or what's mm. gonna happen tomorrow, what am I gonna do with this money, it's going towards the car now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you become super present. And what happened to me is I got super aware of myself, who I am, what I'm doing, what and I realized it's not really where I wanna be. So I have a strong belief that if you don't make that change in your life, you know, whoever, the higher power, will whoever, come in. they'll come in and, and put oh you my back God. on track. You wanna know what's crazy? What? Um, as I'm sitting here listening to you say this, it, it's like me sharing the same story because check this out, 18 years, okay, this happened to be wow. New Year's night. Um, I was actually uh, the designated driver for the night. Nice. Uh, and basically, I had my mom's car, I remember it was a Beretta, and basically <laughs> I had three guests and I was driving them home and, and as soon as I dropped off the last guest, I was gonna go back to the party, right? And then basically I got side, uh, like a, a car drove through a red wow. light, a drunk driver wow. drove through a red light, Basically, if there was a passenger, they would have been dead. Went into a utility pole, wow. spun around, and went down in a ditch. Get out of town. I swear to you, 18, same, wow. same age, same thing, Insane. same experience. Then it was two blocks away from my house. Get out of town. I swear to you. This is no word of a this lie. This is not staged. This is a coincidence. This, this is real. I feel like, you. This is I five million you. people. I'm sharing this, this with crazy. you right here. Right? This is the first time I ever shared it. Wow. Yeah. No, it's the first time I ever heard it. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So, so. What a coincidence. But, but that, that and, and you know what I, what I, what I actually. Uh, I'm grateful for my seatbelt. Your seatbelt. <laughs> I swear to you. Yeah. If, if I didn't have a seatbelt on, I'd be dead. I, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Trust me, I, I, I agree with you on that one. Yeah, and then the anger that comes with that, you know, the depression, the anxiety, you know, and just having survived it, like, why me? Why did I survive? Kind of thing. And then, I have a question for you. Yeah. I mean, when you came out of that, you went, you went rock bottom. What happened to you right after that accident? Um, I was angry because I, the guy with that actually ran the light, I attacked him. Wow. Right, I got out of the car and I was just like livid, Super right? And angry, it took, yeah. took uh, onlookers to pull me off him. Yep. And I actually, uh, the, the, he was a young person, he got charged for reckless driving, lost his license for however long, you know, wow. big charges as a young person, drunk driving, you know, so I don't know how long he lost his license. Yeah, and I didn't sure. even see that guy again for probably, 15 years and then a friend of mine brought a gentleman over that wanted to do business with me wow. that heard about this guy that's doing business guy shows up on my doorstep in Toronto I, this happened in London showed up on my doorstep in Toronto wow. with this guy trying to hook us up to do business but we didn't recognize who it was when we were just talking about it and the guy turned into a ghost he was just like oh my god, god there's a guy that wanted to kill me for crazy years how life and I just said dude let's move on I'm sorry. That's so strong of you. Period. That's insane. Yeah. Done. And he's like, wow, you forgive me? And I was like, done, man. Let's and you guys on. are close now? We're not close, but we did business. We did business. And it was good. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, this is crazy you say that because I have this, I have this fear, like in my a very useful fear, um, to never ever break a, or burn a bridge with someone because I feel so like good, you never that's, know. That's, you, that's good. You no, never absolutely. know. You never small. know who's going to come back in your life and it's be so that true. guy. This could have been your million dollar deal for, for all we know. True. And you, you came out and had to beat him up because you were angry in the moment. Now, mm -hmm. he deserved it obviously for drunk driving. He had to get the pain to never do it again. Mm -hmm. But I, I've, I've had that same experience, not obviously that severe, but people coming back in my life people you never expect. Mm -hmm. And they end up being the person that helps you or someone you need, so yeah. you never want to break a bridge or yeah. leave a bad taste in someone's mouth. I know he made a big mistake. Experience. You know, Even his little sister was in the back seat. She got all wow. banged up and stuff like that. So it's just like, yeah. you know, he learned his own lessons, obviously going through his path and his journey. And simultaneously, I went through that and learned what I had to learn. And as a young person, you know, you don't have the skills we have now, like I'm, I'm 45 years young now, so imagine <laughs> you, okay, with all these wisdom nuggets, knowing <laughs> yeah. what you know now, right? So at 21, I just, I'm amazed, dude. Absolutely, you're, you're I'm very great. lucky. I'm humble too, yeah. man. Like, it, so what happened after the years. car accident? I came out, man, I came out, um, I remember actually looking down, I looked up in the sky and I thought, thank you. Mm. You know, I, I strayed away from God or whatever, you know, you believe in for a while, and I thought, thank you, you saved me. There's a reason for it. I'm gonna find out why. And mm. when I looked down at my car, mm. I remember it was just smashed up. And I, I was an optimistic like right kid. Right off? Right off. I was an optimistic yeah. kid. I was like, that sucks with a smile on my face. I get a new one now. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> and I look at the car and I remember exactly these words I said. I said, this is gonna be an inspiring st short story to share with people one day. 
And you just did. Here we are, right? Here we are. So it, it's crazy. Uh, I, I, I love the idea of taking the most dreadful things in your life and turning them into strengths. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, nice. I've, it's amazing. After that, for four months or so, I went through like real low, okay. but it was weird because I didn't what work. What does low mean? What does it mean? Like depression, I, I went anxiety, in like, I went fear. into confusion, okay. lots of lost, uh, lost feelings, and I stopped working, so I was financially broke. Okay. It was four months of like hippie, man. I was going straight okay. like for the books. So I'm, that big job you had that you were making lost, all that I, I quit it, man. Oh, really? I left it because I realized no amount of money is going to be worth, you know, the person I might become hanging around with people that, you know, like to True. smoke or uh, yeah. cigarettes. I mean, I was into, I was smoking cigarettes. I don't even smoke cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had to, you know, you have yeah. to adjust, right? Because I thought, you know, the money, those kids, they're making two, three grand a week. Yeah. So you can imagine yeah. if you don't know what Parties. to do with it, what, where uh, it can happen, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I don't know leave. anything about that. <laughs> I have not, I nothing. <laughs> cut, cut the seat. <laughs> I came out, man, four months, James. I got introduced to a series of audio tapes um, and I listened to them on repeat every day. I started to learn mm. that thoughts are things. Who was it? Uh, it was a man, um, Kevin Trudeau. Oh, Kevin yeah. Trudeau. Yeah, yeah. It was called Your Wish Is Your Command. I've, um, I've, I've, I've listened to listened it numerous to it. times. There is a 12 CD tape. Uh, each yeah. CD is one hour. I listened to that thing like 11 times. Yeah. Like every month. Mm. And I just brainwashed myself because my, wa my brain needed some washing. It yeah, was yeah. really dirty. Okay. So I legitimately <laughs> brainwashed myself to stay completely powerful in my ideas of what my, where my focus is going. Mm. I learned that thoughts create things. Now, I got super lazy because I thought I could just meditate and it'll come in. Uh, and then yeah, <laughs> you, you, yeah, you learned a lesson through that. Nothing happened. Yeah, the, now, the law of attraction. Have you seen The Secret? Absolutely. You know, they say, you know, uh, what is it? Ask, believe, receive. But yeah. they're missing one ingredient, the law of action. And action, action isn't an exactly. attraction. Ask, believe, ask receive. Exactly. Right. Ask is a verb. It's something you have to do. And asking, some people think it's just, I want money. It's like, well, here's a mm -hmm. dollar. Go ahead. Go home. Yeah. Right? It's more towards, I, you would ask your actions. If, you're, mm -hmm. if you don't believe it because your actions aren't correlating with your belief of what you want, mm -hmm. it's not happening. Yep. That's what I went through, right? So yep. I went through like this total transformation. Now I got an opportunity to go travel Western Canada, do sales. I completely mm -hmm. changed my life there. I actually vlogged every day too mm -hmm. to make sure I have it on camera. It's on YouTube mm -hmm. for people who want to check it so out. So technically you were reborn. I was absolutely reborn after that crash. That, that crash, I came out as a different person and I, I was reborn. That's why I call it that. Let's, let's hold on because we're going to talk about reborn. Absolutely. We're going to go to a short commercial break and we will be back with Armin Shafi. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. I am James Ert, your host. We're sitting here with entrepreneur extraordinaire, the 21 year young, like, <laughs> I, I'm boggled. For, I, I don't, I don't even, know, even know what to say. I'm very rarely at a loss for words, but just when I met you, I, I was just so enthralled with how much moving and doing and shaking. I'm, I'm watching like your Reborn project online. Yeah. I'm watching some of your videos and I'm like, this guy's been doing this a really long time. And I'm, and I'm like, I'm like, and then I find out your age and how long you've been doing it. I'm like, there's no way. Like yeah. he's gotta be like downloading something, or like, you know? So let's Absolutely. talk about Reborn, okay? Let's talk about, you know, what you're doing now, uh, the empowerment behind it and your personal mission in life. Reborn, man, it's as, it's as extreme as it sounds. Yeah. Um, when I went through that crash, I successfully reached a state where throughout the crash, I was actually reached a point where I said, if I were to die right now, I'm happy. Mm. And that happened only, and I realized it only happens when you absolutely change your perspective on your entire past, where mm -hmm. you feel like there is no regrets, no pain. And I was able to accomplish that through the, through the actual incident. And I came out and I thought, what if I died? I, you know, I started bawling my eyes out that night. I didn't even sleep. And I thought, what if I, what if I died? I thought about what could have happened. That fear really pushed me. Mm. So I, that's why I made the, the decision to leave the work I was in, change the things I was doing, because it really jolted me. People. But I realized actually mm. when I came out that you could easily reteach yourself the habits that got you there in the first place. So I started to learn, as I told you, I started to learn how thoughts become things. And I started mm -hmm. to condition myself to actually like train my brain to actually listen to what I want. So I started to do things like in the mornings, cold showers, mm. to really push myself. 
And now I don't just do the cold showers at the end of the shower where it's comfortable. I thought, how can I stretch myself? I do it in the beginning of the shower. Oh. I'm talking about you wake up, you're cold already in, Ca in. Canadian winters. Yeah. And the valves of the shower is already cold and icy. Yeah. You turn that on, it is piercing cold. And oh, I wow. jump under it and I say a couple of beliefs. I like, I say them out loud. So I have a whole like performance in the shower every single morning. Nice. But Reborn is do a concept. Do you sing in the shower? Sing, I used to. Yeah. And now, now I use all my time towards installing beliefs in my mind, you know, like just using all my body, using affirmations, yeah. but physical affirmations. Hmm. I call them kinesthetic language patterns. Like using that. your body, your kinesthetic language. Kinesthetic language patterns. Right, and like you it. pattern it into your body, and yeah. you start to believe it, man. It, after a while of saying the same thing over and over with conviction, mm -hmm. not just saying it like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. really abundant, but you're like, I'm abundant. Yeah, you're feeling You really it. start to feel it. The, feel, um, the feeling is the turbo charge. That's it, yeah. and if you don't feel it, it's not real yet. That's right. So Reborn is a concept where I have these events and um, I decided that it's not really information that changes things because I did learn a lot in those four months, but mm -hmm. how come nothing was happening to the extent I wanted it to? Mm -hmm. The action is where it comes the and the, only, the application and the only way you get that is from some type of energy or force that pushes you mm -hmm. and that comes from experiences. Yes. Because if I didn't go through that crash, I would have still, who God knows where I would have been now, man. I don't, yeah. even, I don't even want to think about it. Yeah, and yeah. I'm so thankful that I'm here right now. We're but thankful you're here. No, absolutely. On the Dynamo I'm Show. <laughs> I'm, <humble. laughs> I'm absolutely You humble. manifested this too. Look at you. You're on fire. I was actually telling James. Uh, you're our youngest months? guest, I got to tell you. Really? Man. You're, oh, you're man, that's there. awesome. Our youngest guest. I was yeah. saying to James four months ago, I was yeah. seeing pictures of this show, and I'm like, what is this? Who's this guy? And now here we are. On you know set. what? Actually, one person brought uh, one of his uh, kids in, but. Uh, but as far right, as like a guest guest. That's fine. I'll let yeah. him take the throne. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You know, um, so yeah, Reborn is the concept. In these events, I realized experiences change things. So yeah. you can learn something and you kind of know it, but nothing changes. Like everyone knows how to get really healthy, get really wealthy. Like it's a science, right? But why aren't you using it? It's because the experience you learned the information in is attached to it. So if you're sitting there and you learned it in a seminar or an event where the guy's kind of lecturing, you're just kind of kind of be like, yeah, you know, that's good to know because mm. the guy's talking to you like this. Yeah, it's kind of good to know. Mm. But in my events, what I do is I rip out of the person, what's really in there bugging them, holding them back from a fulfilling mm, life. I saw that. I, I, I rip it out right now, just their heart comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I hold it in their hands, I show it to them. How, how do they it? see that video, just while we're on that? you know, How do they actually see some of your stuff online? So, um, for the audience. Yeah. Yeah, they can go to facebook.com slash yep. reborn, reborn with Armin Shafi. With Armin Shafi. Reborn, reborn with reborn. Armin yes. Shafi. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And, and I, I encourage people to follow me on Facebook as well. Yeah. I like to put out a lot of stuff, value. Especially if you're younger, you know, take a look at this. Yeah. This, this young lad here, he's on fire. I feel like in the world of youth, there is there is a strong character like that missing. So totally. If, if I'm going to be that person, you know I'm Josh super Shipp? honored. Have you heard of him? No, I haven't heard Josh of him. Josh Shipp with two Ps. S-H-I-P-P. -P. I'll check him out. He's, a, he's an American youth speaker. Cool. Um, definitely somebody that would inspire you. I'll, I'll check yeah, him out for yeah, sure. He's, he's kind of the king of the youth speaking world. Beautiful. Yeah, I will so, check that out. Yeah, he's a young guy too. He's probably now he's probably 25, 26, but yeah. he started when he was your age. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and yeah, I think there's a lot, but it's kind of rare in the youth now. And there's mm -hmm. a couple of people like Eric Thomas, Gary mm -hmm. Vaynerchuk is a good one for like, but he's you know he's 40 or something. So there's like that missing character in the. There's youth. a myth though that there's no money in the youth speaking circuit. That's right? not true. It's not true at all. Because they believe that the yeah. kids don't have money. I mean, mm -hmm. here I am, 20. I went to an event last year. Completely changed everything in my life, like I give me a good perspective and I'm not the type of person to spend money like that, but I saw a lot of the young people there. I'm talking like 18 to 21, 22. Really? A lot of people there. Which event? Um, it was a Tony Robbins event actually. It was oh, beautiful, wow. yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah. guy blew me away, man. Four days, how does he do he, it? He can bring people out, that's Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. I don't believe that. I believe any market, if you focus and care enough, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll care for you as well. But these oh, events, yeah. what I focus on is I take them out. I take out, like, you know, I challenge someone. I say, if you were to die right now, would you be fulfilled? And usually it's no. If it is great, tell me why and I want to share it with other people so they learn. But if it's not, yeah. what is it, what's missing? And the, usually the things that they care about the most come out. Mm. Because I say, what if you had six months to live, James? What are you gonna do first? You're not gonna say, you know, I'm just gonna wake up normally, have breakfast and probably plan out my day. No, you have six months, you're gonna be on urgency and you're gonna run towards the things you want and totally. you're gonna make sure it's what, something that's gonna fulfill you. So I take that out of them on the spot. I you know, some it. people in a moment, I work, I work with some people, 63 years they haven't been happy. Mm. And you know, 30, 40 years they haven't been happy. And in, in a matter of like two, three hours, they figure out they this figure is what's out. missing and they go towards it. I use anything, whatever it takes for them to push it. If it's fear, great. It. If you were to die right now, I know it's scary, but who would you really become? That's the person you gotta work towards. I'm and gonna watch Armin Shafi videos for <laughs> the next six months of my life.
<laughs> grow my hair back. Yeah, Woo! I mean, that could happen too. I'd be honest. <laughs> It, it, I love it. It's funny, James, too, because what happens is usually it's the reason why they're not fulfilled. And this is a message for anyone, young, old, wherever yeah. you are. Care if you're usually not fulfilled, it's because if I ask you right now, what would you have to do? And you say, I got to be, I got to travel to this place. I got to find love. I got to make this money. I got to make my parents proud. Whatever it is, I say, well, what are you doing right now that's either working towards it or planning towards it? And usually you don't have any of those answers. Yeah. Of course you're going to feel empty. Every day you're waking up and yeah. the most important thing to you just came out, you're yeah. not even working towards it. So that is going to eat you alive inside as mm -hmm. you keep doing the on, on the fake stuff in the front because you think you should do it, not it's a must. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really like, I, I'm a huge believer in this industry too. There's really no originality. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are redundant and saying the same it, things. You know, it's just who communicates to the best. It's true. And I believe the experience Applying, is huge. Execution. And, and that's what blows my mind because experience trumps Everything. Everything. Okay. And for such a young person <laughs> yeah. to have this wisdom, like where is it coming from? That's that's what blowing my mind. You know, like I was telling you I was good too. I was a shooter, you know, I yeah. did all you know what I did back in the day. Yeah. Um, you just have such a great head on your shoulders. You know, I don't know if it's just a really great upbringing or you know, just <laughs> you, you've done really good and you know I could toot your horn all day long but what I like about you is you're actually doing it okay yeah. it's not me just stroking you it's me saying congratulations Thank you. you have market share and once you have market share and you have interest you know you're gonna hit that tipping point you're gonna spill over into the mainstream and you may do it before you're 25 you know that's right. that's what's exciting it is. so you got a fan in me that's for sure so <laughs> let's say today's the last day you know on the planet and you were to share three nuggets of wisdom from you what, 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 is, what is missing? You know, where, where's Armin Shafi in five years? You're, you're reversing it on me, I love it. Yeah, that. yeah, so yeah. So three things that you are missing. You got one minute. That, the three things that are missing that I will go towards today is my last day. I would create the biggest attention, like, like brawl ever possible. Like downtown, I go downtown and like start yelling in the streets and create something that's a movement so that by the time of 12, 12 like 11.59 p.m. tonight I die, there's something that just got shifted in people. So I would absolutely go and move something in people. Right. And I believe the extroverted version of like the outgoing, going out and talking to people is, is where it's at. Other things is I would make sure every single person I've ever met, they know that I love them, 100%. Ooh, nice. That I love them and Great they feel one. it because I feel like a lot of people miss gra gra uh, gratification in life and mm. miss appreciation in life, I would do that 100%. And honestly, if I would probably go and probably say I love you to a, a girl that, uh, that I felt something for for a long time. Does uh, she know? I don't even think there is one right now, but if I really thought okay, about it, I okay. could. <laughs> I was going to call you out on it in front of 5 million We're people. We're calling her right like, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring the phone. Bring the phone. No, <laughs> I would probably do her. something spontaneous like that, romantic like I that. I, mean, I love that kind of emotional stuff. Very cool. Yeah. Well, you know what? The love is reciprocated. You're doing great work. And so I'm much. proud of you. And I can't wait to see you know, what you do over the next little while. Yeah. So we're going to follow you closely. I am James Ert. This is The Dynamo Show. This is episode 33. What an epic episode. Stay tuned for episode 34.